the salary survey, just to give you some context, um, last year we, we, we took three months to do this. It was our first one, and it was a much more pleasant experience from a stress point of view. Um, this year we um, thought we'd really like to update it and um, present it this, which gave us a four-week window. Um, so it was a lot of fun um, getting this ready. Um, and we had 23 participants, we'll go into the details around that, um, and it's Cape Town based. So a lot of salary services are national, they're Western Cape or they're international, which perhaps for Cape Town operations, you're sort of wondering, so is that Joburg influence? So it will give you a guide for Cape Town. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a second phase. Um, so we had 23 <coughs> participants and we really appreciate the people who could help us in that time. So uh, especially a big thank you, to, for example, for Cobus, who was the second person to fill it out within 24 hours of us sending it out. So we like that sort of participation. Um, and, uh, but a lot of people said they would like to participate, but they just couldn't hit that timeline. So we're going to do a second wave where we will open it up again from the 1st of June, so already, to the 30 <coughs> 31 days or 30 uh, days in June. Whichever it is, 30 days, thank you. Um, to the, uh, to, and we'll close it again, and then anyone else who's participated will add it to these results. The other thing we're going to do, but we won't do it in June, we'll do it then after June, um, is we're going to then do a separate survey that will add to this around how people are structuring their pay given uh, the uh, consequences of the um, equal treatment and how it's affecting. A, a number of businesses and BPOs are in the process of working this out. Um, so we think that not everyone will be able to answer it, but those who can, it will be quite interesting. But we didn't want to make it an overly complex in one go. So if you would like to participate, please uh, contact <coughs> us. We'd love to have you contri uh, contribute and participate. And then also if that's a uh, third phase where we start looking at how we pay a structure around the equal treatment, it'd be great to get your input around how you would like us to structure, what sort of results you'd like to find. Obviously we have opinions, but we'd like it to be structured to suit you. Please also get in touch with us. Cool, well, um, thanks Dermot. For those of you who haven't met me before, um, term I work at Status as the Business Development and Client Solutions Specialist. And I've been elected to present on our 2015 BPO and contact center <coughs> industry salaries and benefits survey. Um, I know some of you have seen our 2014 findings, um, but for those of you who haven't, basically the point of the present of the survey is to a benchmark in the war for talent and hopefully provide some insight into what you can be doing to attract and retain the right talent. So this year we had a bit of a different uh, data pool from last year. Um, the biggest difference being in that it was larger. We had 23 um, participants this year. Um, tw the highest amount was in um, the captive, uh, sorry, BPO domestic, um, where we had 12 participants. Last year, there was a much higher participation in uh, captive domestic, <coughs> so a bit of a difference there, as well as we saw a much higher emphasis on customer service this year which is probably a truer reflection of the marketplace in Cape Town. So moving on um, to agent level <coughs> salary bands within uh, the various operations, we've submitted them into different functions being sales, customer service, and collections. <coughs> so the figures you're seeing there, we've asked participants to uh, give us on average their lowest salaries for agent level, as well as their um, top earners, <coughs> so the figures that you're seeing there, the white line with the black figure above, is we've aggregated all the lowest numbers and the highest numbers, giving you a sort of market-related band with which to work in. Um, <coughs> interestingly, we saw um, quite an increase in sales in this space, but that could also be partly due to our increased uh, sample size here. Also, we didn't necessarily make a distinction between outbound and inbound, with inbound probably being a uh, greater emphasis on base salary than commission driven. For captive domestic, <coughs> there's quite a large salary, salary band on the customer service side. A lot of these organizations um, work within financial services, <coughs> so there is a higher demand for uh, skill sets with proper accreditation, such as FAES, or in some cases, 
um, only recruiting exclusively graduates. BPO International, likewise again with the customer service, very large salary band there. Um, depending on various different campaigns, different sort of skill sets required. Um, particularly if you require um, <coughs> sort of IT related skill sets, etc., you're going to need to pay a hang of a lot more for those sort of um, the right talent there. <coughs> Captive International, out of the participants that we had, um, none of them had a sales function. And generally, they pay the most, being that their core business is overseas, it's earned in dollars and euros. They can pay more, secure the right talent, and still save money by having the operations here. So although you'll see customer service, for instance, is a bit lower than what we've seen in some of the other slides, the salary bands are much smaller there, with the low average being around 8,000. And the same for collections, um, with the low average being above 7,000. So we've included the BAPESA key indicator report for 2013 and 2014 as a comparison study. Um, we've put them next to each other. You can see the 2013 in, in red, 14 in blue. Um, and these findings weren't too dissimilar from our findings last year, although we found slightly higher figures, particularly in the captive space, than, than what is displayed here. <coughs> okay, so we've seen agent level salaries. Uh, we'll now look at the different job functions in the contact center, which some of you will see your own position, hopefully. Um, <coughs> So agents there, we've included the lowest that we saw in the previous slides and the highest. <coughs> so we've given you the full band. We've done the same for across, the other positions. Across sales, collections, and so it's an average <coughs> for all, across all the three board, yeah. types. Um, so team leaders there, it's quite interesting that we mentioned that earlier in uh, performance management. But increasingly, um, a lot of businesses is finding that it's the strategic importance of securing the right talent at that level. And so <coughs> there are operations willing to pay 20K and plus. It's not to say that you can't find good talent at that 14, 15 mark, but it's going to be more of a hit and miss than paying a bit more for it. <coughs> um, graduation Baileys, obviously not everyone has those, but they're generally on the lower end of team leader. And operations managers can vary quite uh, drastically depending on the size of your operation and what the strategic expectation of the operations manager is. So, I was thinking, seeing as there's so many HR individuals here, perhaps it's best to open this up to the floor and see if anyone <laughs> actually, uh, if there's any raised eyebrows there that looks odd to anyone in the contact center industry. You're all very quiet, so I can only imagine that you can pay a lot more than this. And you <laughs> no, I'd imagine it's the people that are underpaid who jump up and make yeah. a phone call. Um, so we've, in, we've got salary bands for um, workforce managers, uh, business analysts, um, also um, QA agents, QA managers, training managers, uh, training facilitators. It's just that with the limited time, we didn't put them all in. We also have commission by agents uh, in that. And again, because of the limited time, we didn't put them all in. But we're happy to come share those slides with you too. Um, but yeah, um, so we just thought operations and HR would be interesting given the nature of the event to put in today. Okay, so moving on from salaries onto uh, benefits. The first that we looked at was medical aid. You'll see here um, we've got our different sectors again. Um, the average RAND value, the number of participants who did contribute towards medical aid, and the percentage of the medical aid scheme that they contributed. What you would notice here is that captive domestic apparently pay 100% on average, but that only equates to 575 RAND. On Looking at this a bit closer, I realized that one of the participants is a uh, supplier of medical aid schemes, so they probably get it at cost. Um, so that would have skewed those figures a little bit. But there's clearly some, um, there's a variety of different medical aid schemes out there if you look at what, um, on average, they're paying. Um, pension, like we, likewise, we can see the same. Um, last year, we found uh, the average spend on pension for agents was um, 600 and some change. The average this year is a bit up from that, close on 700, so there's a bit of, bit, bit of an increase there. The captive international there, the two participants who did contribute, didn't give us a rand value, so there's no, nothing in there, but they said that they pay 55%.
this was quite interesting. Um, looking at all of the participants, only two did not work shifts outside of normal office hours, so after five o'clock. Um, there were three that uh, didn't respond to the questions, but the rest all worked shifts outside. Now if we look at what shifts there were, um, you'll see the majority um, are either 24 hours or between five and midnight. So a lot of late shifts. <coughs> and it becomes quite interesting when we look at um, transport solutions, being that a lot of these organizations don't offer any transport solutions, and yet they are working shifts that are sometimes up to midnight or later. With the majority of agents living in the Cape Flats region, um, obviously they're poor. Um, transport solutions become very uh, pivotal towards effectiveness around punctuality, absenteeism, attrition. Um, but it's not necessarily just geographical location or proximity. It's also the effectiveness of the transport solution. So using public transport, for instance, if you're in the southern suburbs, can be very difficult from the Cape Flats because there's a train line that needs to be changed and you might have to jump in a taxi afterwards. It doesn't just increase the time that the agent might take to get to and from work, but also the cost. Um, okay, so then we also asked questions around career, career awareness initiatives. Um, so we, we asked around what sort of uh, activities there were, whether there were events or ongoing. Um, and then we asked this, which was quite interesting. Um, were they individualized to an agent, to a team, or were they generic to the entire company? Um, you can almost see going across from the first to the last, um, very individualized from the BPO domestic and completely generic from the captive international, which is quite interesting. We then went on and looked further at how frequently these were conducted. Very, very um, variety of answers here. Um, the only real one that was uh, quite consistent was in Captive International. They're doing generic across the com company um, no more than twice a year, which could, could, look, could to me be quite interesting as a reflection as to uh, your company culture. I uh, just um, I was uh, given a, a stat by Big Financial Services around an attrition study they did across the company, and we all have assumptions around why people leave. There was one thing in the pie chart that was double digits. There was one other which was eight percent, which was everything else was sort of one percent or point something percent. Everything else, all the things we assume are big. The one that was 8%, I think, was uh, line management, the experience of line management. Pay was actually quite small. Um, and the 42% was career development. It was, and this is a big company that employs thousands of people across, and it has a big call center too. Um, so I think this is a very interesting growing demand. We all talk a good game, I think. Very few of us are doing this well. Um, but what's interesting is the Captain Internationals there is that they're big brands that people aspire to work to for their career, yet they seem to do least in terms of career development, which is quite interesting. I think uh, it's a correlation. I'm not reading into that. It's just quite interesting. <laughs> um, we do have other slides around career awareness, around um, pensions and medical aid, around transport, but obviously in the interest of time. So if you'd like to see more, you'd like to ask us more questions or tell us how we can do this better, we welcome the feedback.